here we go, people. Let's uh, let's do the thing, the the thing with the stuff and things. Yeah, do it. Sazim. Yeah, I'm fucking pissed about all the shit. It's fucking goddamn it. I fucking god fucking damn it. I fucking hate it. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 203 for Thursday, the 20, I think it's the 21st of February, 2019. Uh, this is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos. Kent, rescue me because I got I to gotta, I gotta do something with the sound real quick. <gasps> oh, I fucking hate all the things. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, movie party was, was this weekend. <laughs> Apparently that's uh, uh, a thing, huh? <laughs> yeah, I I um I, I missed the movies. Yeah, uh, Steph and I were at a a birthday party that ran long, entirely, some, entirely too long. Had some beverages. Yeah, uh, we got back to the house and um, had many more beverages and hopped onto the uh, post movie party Discord chat. Ah, and, uh, shit got a little crazy. Yeah, and I decided. <laughs> That it was a good idea to call the movie party hotline and leave Poodle a message. I didn't expect him to play that message about 30 seconds after I, <laughs> I made it. I was hoping it for it to be a, a little surprise for him to find later. Uh, but no, he played it about 10 times. And then W. Scottis One decided to make a, a cool little uh, sounder thing for RMP incorporating and, my and, voicemail. And then email that to me. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, movie parties a lot of fun, folks. <laughs> Especially when Kent drinks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey man, um, I have found out the retirement doesn't cure the flu. Now, oh man, let me explain. I don't have the flu. Okay, well that's good. Right, but apparently my retirement has not cured my kid's flu because both the littles are down and sick right now. Mm, and I don't know if you know that or know this or not, but being home with littles that are sick is not the funnest or more pr- most productive uh, aspect of fatherhood. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I believe that's true. I mean, uh, you probably have to hone some of your, some of your fatherhood skills, like um, uh, comforting... Uh, upset children. No. Uh, um, uh, cleaning up puke. No. No. None of that. No. Uh, <laughs> no. I just I just throw them in the bed with a bucket and say here. Oh, then the, I mean you should be productive then. No, it, it's like it's like two two kids in a bucket. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, I wish them them health improvements in the near future. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, one's still got a fever. The other one, I think, is feeling better. That's, uh, yeah, it's 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 been interesting. Um, uh, how was your weekend, though? I mean, I, mine, mine kind of kind of chugged along, but how was yours? Uh, not bad, not bad. I, I missed Movie Party, unfortunately. That was on Saturday because uh, we were at the aforementioned birthday party. But on the two days that, that sandwiched that day, Friday and Sunday, mm-hmm. we actually went to the movies and watched a couple of them. Uh, Lego Movie 2. That's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Lego Movie 2 is fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing to see here. Yeah. If you liked the first one, I have faith that you will like the second one. I really enjoyed the first one. Therefore, I enjoyed the second one. Uh, nothing really to write home about. The best part is probably the new songs. Uh, well, I mean, in all fairness, that was kind of the best part of the original, too. Yeah, like everything is awesome. Well, yeah. there's, <laughs> there's a couple of new ones. Like, there, like for example, everything's not awesome. I, I see they went in a different direction. Yes, yes. It's kind of the counterpoint to the first <laughs> song. <laughs> Uh, no, it's, it's pretty good. If, if you like the first one, yeah, check out, check out the second one. Um, okay. Mm. So, uh, I have to ask, there, there's a difference between the Lego movie and the Batman Lego movie. Like in the Batman Lego movie, Bat, Batman in particular kind of knows he's a Lego. Like he, he, he lives in this, he, he willingly lives in this delusion that, that everything's actually going on around him. 
Um, not that doesn't that's not how it is in the Lego movie, the original, because they're they're like that's their life. They don't they don't think that way. Which of these two aspects is it in the sec in the second Lego movie? It it's kind of a combination. <laughs> it, it's still the, the the same conceit as the first movie, where it's you know a, a kid or kids playing with the Legos, and it's this imaginative scenario from the kids' minds, right? But the mm -hmm. Legos think that they're you know really sentient, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, there's many moments where they they're very much in the real world and reacting to you know like falling off of a desk or something like that and um it's funny that you mentioned batman because batman like he knows that he was in the batman lego movie <laughs> so <laughs> um yeah it, it's pretty good but let me tell you if you're gonna see one movie that's playing right now mm -hmm. it needs to be alita battle angel really I had moderate expectations for this film. Those expectations were far exceeded. It is two hours and something of just immersion into this amazingly developed world. Uh, it's so. Now, th this was one of the movies that fell off the winter movie draft, right? And got yes, got bumped out. Yes, and it just it just opened last. Weekend, I think. Yeah, I think last weekend was opening weekend. And, um, yeah, dude, like, just just go see it. it it's based on an old manga from, like, the 90s, I mm -hmm. think. Um, but, I mean, none of that matters. This is, like, it's world building at its best. You, you basically spend the entire time learning about this world, but not realizing that you're like learning about the world because you're so immersed in the story. Gotcha. It's so good. I don't want to spoil anything about this movie. It's just, it is just fucking fantastic. That's good. Go see it. <laughs> now, now I don't like, um, anime in really any way, shape or form, except for a few standouts. Is this going to be one of those standouts or is this kind of like an, enough of a different style that I would even enjoy it? It's, well, first of all, it's not anime. It is a live action movie with some some CG. I mean, it's as much anime as Star Wars is anime. Okay, so then the answer is yes. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's got anime influence, of course, because like yeah. the the cyborg, the main cyborg character has like what what you would call like manga eyes, like the larger eyes or whatever that's mm -hmm. been basically done with CG. Uh, but I mean, other than that i mean it doesn't it doesn't feel like anime ish other than that at least to me nice. uh, now yeah. I, I i think i've kind of slimmed down some of the narrowed down some of the area that i fell out of love and straight into hatred of of anime and i think i narrowed it down to final fantasy 8 okay because the, the movie or the video game? The the actually it'd be Final Fantasy VII, the video game. Oh oh okay. It, it mm -hmm. took on a completely different art form, and I really just didn't enjoy that game. I never made it through it, and I didn't like it. And it it, it has the trappings of anime throughout it, and it just irritated the crap out of me. Maybe it was eight. I don't know. One of the two. I didn't like it, and I think that's when. Because before that, before that time, I just like only seen anime once in a while. Like it was no big, you know, Speed Racer was like the big anime that I'd seen, you know. Right. Um, but having gone through that experience, I it just irritated me so bad. I think that carries over to the to the the the, the art style carried over into other forms of media, and it's the most direct link that I can find to something I didn't like. And I think that's really where my animosity towards anime came from having said that I have noticed in the last few years that I've gotten a little bit more accepting of the art form and art style. That's interesting to me for, for a couple of reasons. Number one, final fantasy seven is probably the most beloved <laughs> of the entire final fantasy s series. I, I would say six slash three, but that's just me. Yeah, well, I mean, like pop culture relevance, below, be like right. universally beloved. What's your favorite Final Fantasy game? Like Final Fantasy VII will come up way more than any other, I, I think. 
Yeah. Um, so there's that. But then also, like, basing your hatred of anime off of the Final Fantasy VII video game is, like, basing my hatred for horses off of this one time when I was watching a show about cats. No, I'm not saying it's just <laughs> or that it's it's not uh, completely silly and, and farcical. I'm just saying that I think that's where it goes. I think that's where the the, the trail ends. Yeah, well, I'm I'm glad you're you're rediscovering anime and like actually starting to enjoy some. I like I know I know you had a good time watching a Gretzko. Yeah, Gretzko is amazing, and that's gosh, man, that show, the whole show is just stupid good. Speaking of which, did you see the the holiday episode that they came out with? No. Yeah. Oh, you need to need to grab it. It's like uh, it's only like you know fifteen twenty minutes or whatever. Right. It's in a uh, Gretzko it was, episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But it's a, it, it's like a holiday exclusive episode. Like it's outside of the season, but it is like literally the next episode. It's, is, like is, what happens immediately. It's it's like uh it's like White Bear for um for <sighs> no, like not even a little bit. <laughs> it's like the next episode of a Gretzko. This is the show, folks. This is how it's going to go today. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! All right, so you, you didn't watch any movies this week? I did week, not. I presume. No, unfortunately, yeah. I watched a lot of YouTube. I oh, man, I've been. But we'll get we'll get into my YouTube here in, here in a few. Um, I have been playing, and this kind of feeds into it as well. So much uh, SNES Classic, like the little SNES Classic. The, the yeah. little thing. The, the little Super Nintendo emulator. Yes, the, the official one the Nintendo put out. And mm-hmm. I mean, I've been playing Super Mario World. I've been playing Zelda. I've been playing Final Fantasy. I've been playing like all these games. And it's it's been amazing. And I suck so bad at all of them. Except for Mario. Like if you suck at Mario, you just don't, you, you, you don't deserve to play video games. If you suck at Mario, yeah. you suck at life. <laughs> it's it's not untrue. I mean, my six-year-old can play Mario, so there's that. Um, It's it's just taking me down nostalgia, and I don't know which happened first, um, the YouTube viewing that we'll be talking about here in a few, or the SNES, because... Um, you know what? Honestly, here it goes. Okay, I when I when I picked up the Elgato Stream Deck, I also picked up a uh, the the sixty p or sixty s streamer that allows you to hook a HDMI into a USB three point And I've had that hooked up, and I finally just brought my my SNES Classic from my TV over here into that port, and so I was playing it through my my computer. Um, which might ex- explain some of the delay and some of the problems I was having. But anyway, Why you suck so bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look, I'm, I'm looking for any excuse I can find. All right, <laughs> the moon's full this week. That's why I suck. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I started doing that, and then uh, my interest in that got me into watching a lot of speed run videos. Man, I've been watching some speed run videos. There is, uh, have you ever watched speed run videos? Yeah, a couple. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not into speedrun videos. I think they're dumb. I, but. I, 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 I think watching someone on Twitch um, a speedrun a video game for 18 hours try to take one second, shave one second off their final time, uh, and comparing that to everyone else is completely stupid. But... <laughs> Watching videos that are summary of those battles and can kind of get in the details and, and name some of the glitches and some of the hacks and things like that that they've been able to pull off to get their times the way they are, that I find immensely entertaining. So that's what I've been watching. <laughs> right. I don't want to watch the speed run. I don't want to watch someone play Zelda for 30 minutes just to find out they lost the record by two seconds. I don't care. I, don't. I, I think it's hilarious when they get like a couple of hours in, realize that they fucked up at some point, and they just reset. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Just like without skipping, they just reset and start playing again. It's like <gasps> the the other one that kills me is um, so they have uh Zelda in particular, the Legend of Zelda, the original one came out in what eighty seven, eighty six, eighty seven. Um, there, there's a couple of different ways that you can speed run it, and one of the big changes was that people stopped doing the 
um, up A trick on the second controller that'll basically insta kill you and sit you back to the reset point, whether that's the beginning of the dungeon or back to the old man's cave. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, that was just, just watching the, the how things have progressed and the times that these people have gotten. And then I watched one, the most recent one I watched, I watched last night, and it was, it was so stupid. It was the history. Are you ready for this? The history of Mike Tyson's punch out. Speed run, blindfolded. What? Uh, I'm not even. I'm not shitting you at all. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. So this this one guy is a, a Mike Tyson uh, speed runner, and he was going through, and he was like, you know what? As a fluke, uh, I'm going to just do it blindfolded. And he got through like the first seven fights, and there's only 14 fights in the game. He got through like the first seven fights just by sound, and then the next year he comes along and he blows that out of the water. He gets like the first. 12 fights done um, or the first 13, but he, he fails on Mike Tyson. And at the time he was like, you can't beat Mike Tyson. It's just, you can't do it blindfolded. There's no way to, to, to match times with the sounds or anything else. You just can't do it. Well, some people took that on as a challenge and within a month, I think somebody had beaten Mike Tyson blindfolded. And then within a month or so after that, people were doing the entire 14 fight segment blindfolded. And you're, you're blindfolded, then you turn the machine on, and you don't take the blindfold off until your game is done. So it's not like they're taking it off and they can resync their eyes with the sounds and shit. No. Right. Like, it was, that was intense. And then to find out at the end of it, one of the ways that the guy who finally beat Mike Tyson was able to do it was because of some hints in, in uh, different forms. And one of the people dropping the hints was a, was a Mike Tyson punch out speedrunner who was actually doing the video that I was watching. And I was like, Oh, oh my. <laughs> it's like inception. <laughs> yeah. It was, um, so that's what I've been doing. Like I've been watching so many video games and playing SNES classic. And it's just like, that's my free. Cause I can pick it up. I can play a level in Mario and put it down and walk away. And there goes five minutes, but I've enjoyed it. Like, it's just, it's so, so good. You, you made me remember some trivia. You you were talking about Mike Tyson. So you know you know the game Street Fighter Two, the the yeah. boxer character that looks like Mike Tyson. Yeah. Well, his original name was supposed to be M Tyson. Mm. And they're like the lawyers were like, no, dude, no, 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 no. We 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 don't have the license for for Tyson's likeness. You can't do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so like, well, what if we call him M Bison? Yeah. And they're like, ah, I mean, still not enough. But still like, no. So like, okay, all right, all right. We, we, we still like the name. We're, we're going to still use it, but we're going to switch the characters names because the leader was supposed to be called Balrog. And they just switched their names. Was it Balrog? Is that his name? I think so. That yeah. Was, that that's his right. name, right? Uh, but yeah, so they just switched their names. So now the, the leader is M. Bison and that's, that's how he got his name. That so, is crazy. Yeah, weird stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if if you like weird stuff, you probably like watching Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we encourage you to go over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Show us that you give a fuck and give us a buck. Yep. And uh, this episode, we are going to send our personal thank you very much to Lincoln Hammond, um, who I believe is in chat right now. Um, he is one of the people that have supported us for quite a long time and done some very, very good things in the way of making this a better show and making us more capable of doing it. So thank you very much to Lincoln Hammond. Yeah, thanks, man. And you'll also see he is a uh, one of the, one of our five dollar contributors. He his name is in the show notes at or at, at the, the credits at the end of the video version. So if you haven't seen that yet, stop on by there and uh, maybe even get your name in those five dollar credits. Hell yeah, man! patreoncom slash ritual misery. All right, man. Uh, is it about that time? It's about that time. Can I please have your attention? In the last thirty minutes. How about I unmute the channel? Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's game. Play with him. Play with him. All right, so a uh, a requirement of my next mixer is that all channels will have to be addressable by USB because I cannot seem to get a clean audio feed from my computer into my mixer without a bunch of static and crap overlaying it. So that's why I mute that channel. It's so irritating. Anyway, if you 
If you have uh, suggestions on a multi-channel USB capable mixer, I am not necessarily shopping for one, but I'd like to know. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. All right, man. My game this week is called Exclusively Exclusive. Uh, am I, are you sure that you can share this with me? <laughs> well, we're talking about video games this episode. A lot about video games. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to to see if you know which games are exclusive to which consoles. I see what you did there. <sighs> All right. So I, I'm keeping it kind of simple. Uh, your only choices are Xbox or PlayStation. Okay. When I say Xbox, it could be Xbox. It could be Xbox 360, Xbox One, X- Xbox One X, what, whatever the fuck version of Xbox. <laughs> <clears throat> Likewise with PlayStation. It could be any any one of them. So your choices are Xbox or PlayStation. Hmm. Makes sense? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I, 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 I appreciate the binary choice. Right. <laughs> I've found that that is the best way to go with, with these podcast games. It's <laughs> this or that. Yeah. Or whether it's true or false or A or B or whatever. Choose your weapon of choice, right? <clears throat> yeah. All right, man. Your first your first game is Titanfall. Titanfall. That is a PlayStation. You say PlayStation. <laughs> Titanfall is an Xbox exclusive. Oh, uh, well. All right. Is this an Xbox or PlayStation exclusive? God of War. Xbox. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) You're not doing so hot, dude. All right. Number three, Infamous. PlayStation. Yay. (laughs) I can tell you've been playing that a lot because you were very quick (laughs) on the draw with that one. No. (laughs) Like all these ones that you've mentioned so far have been emblazoned on the console itself, so I'm just a re- uh, I'm dyslexic in my imagining of the console <laughs> art. All right, uh, the next one, Gears of War. That's Xbox. Because I actually have that one. That's what I was conf- confusing uh, uh, Titanfall for. Ah, uh, that makes sense. That makes sense. It's, all right, it, I think it still got it wrong, but whatever. Is Ratchet and Clank Xbox or PlayStation? I'm going to go PlayStation because uh, Banjo-Kazooie was on the same engine in their PlayStation, right? Um, I don't know about that, but uh, uh, Ratchet and Clank is definitely PlayStation exclusive. All right. uh, This one should be pretty easy. Your next one is Halo. Oh, that's Xbox. Yeah, of course. For a long time, that was the only reason anybody would buy an Xbox was for Halo. And I don't like Halo, so I never bought an Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> right. Until I found it mismarked at the BX and got it for like 40 bucks. Oh, my gosh. All right. Uh, is this one exclusive to Xbox or PlayStation? Uncharted. PlayStation. <laughs> I almost prematurely hit the button. <laughs> you were like, play. <laughs> I, was, I, yeah, I was doubting myself as I said it. It's like, I play it on the xbox <laughs> oh no boo yeah. yeah that that one was uh xbox the spot and on playstation yeah <laughs> all right your next one is forza motorsport oh forza what? is xbox because i have a couple of those all right <sighs> your next one is killer instinct Ooh. Is that exclusive to Xbox or PlayStation? Uh, hmm. That's a 50-50 for me cuz I only remember it on the old I think I remember on the 64. Hmm. That maybe, would be Killer Instinct Gold. Yeah, maybe even older than that. Oh, shoots. I'm going to go I'll go Xbox because why not? Oh. Yeah, that one actually pisses me off because I <laughs> love Killer Instinct, but I never had an Xbox. And when they announced that they're bringing Killer Instinct back, but it's going to be an X- Xbox exclusive, I was pretty pissed. Hmm. Uh, so last year when Isaac got a got an Xbox, I believe for his birthday last year, um, I bought him Killer Instinct <laughs> so I could whip <laughs> his ass on it. 
Uh, the trials of fatherhood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. You're actually doing pretty well here. You had a rough start, mm. uh, but have gotten everything correct since then. Oh, shit. Pressure's this, on. This is your final one. Dun, so dun, dun. I jinxed you. <laughs> All right. Your final one. Was this an Xbox or PlayStation exclusive? Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm going to go with PlayStation just because I think we're due for a PlayStation. You got eight out of ten correct. Sir. I the only game ones... theoryed that last one. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Well, I think you game theoryed a couple of things, but uh... <laughs> I might have. <laughs> so eight, uh, eight yeah, out of ten. So that, was a, that was our game. That was not too bad. Uh, I'm almost proud of myself, except for those first two that I should have gotten but didn't. Okay, all this, um, all this is brought out. I wanted to discuss with you. And it's better if we do this uh, in front of people because then it's recorded and we can't go back on our word. Some of our worst and favorite memories of video games. All right. And um, you know, it- I, 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 want, I want to start with a little history and I'll, I'll share mine and then uh, you can share yours. That way people kind of know where we're at. Okay. I was an Atari junkie. I didn't. I never owned one. I never had an Atari in my house. But anytime anybody had an Atari, that's the only thing that I wanted to do. Then I became an arcade junkie. Um, back when a quarter was a lot, and would play. And every game was a quarter. By the way, there was no uh, premium games that cost fifty cents. Yeah, I think we were in high school when when that whole yeah, trend. Yeah, that's so stupid. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I got the original Nintendo Entertainment System the Christmas it came out. I got it for Christmas. Um, my favorite game on that system was Zelda, of course, the original Le- Le- uh, Legend of Zelda. I remember playing that game forever. Um, I went and got, I bought my own Super Nintendo uh, with babysitting money for $149.95 plus tax, which I didn't have. My grandpa had to spot me the tax. And... Um, I see my next system was the Nintendo 64 that I got on launch day. I picked up uh, Ocarina of Time on launch day. And my next system after that would have been the PlayStation. The Well, actually, I had a PS1, but I only bought it for Tony Hawk. Yeah, before it was called PS1, probably. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, it was, it was, it was PS1. Oh, so it been, so PlayStation had been out for several years at this point. Yeah, yeah, because I was in uh, in Okinawa with you, and I didn't have one. You did, so I went and bought the PlayStation, one, the PS One. Yeah, um, yeah, and uh, yeah, so I had that, and I only bought it for that one game. That's really the only game I ever played on it. And then, well, I, I mean, I played a few others, but I always borrowed them and had it taken back. And then, uh, see, Nintendo sixty four. I never had a PlayStation two. I got an Xbox because I found it for forty bucks brand new and then the ps4 and i have two of those and i have an xbox 360 which i picked up somewhere along the way so that's that's my gaming history as far as console games um computer games i've been playing pretty much anything that i could afford and get my hands on and goof off with and had any chance although my clear favorite has always been civilization Mm. yeah i think i think my pc gaming career began with either oregon trail Number Munchers, or Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? It was definitely one of those three games. Yeah, yeah. God, what was that on? Was it Apple IIe, I think, maybe? I don't I even know, yeah. Some super old system. <clears throat> All right, so my my video game, my console gaming history, so I, I don't remember what was first. I think it was probably Atari 2600 at my friend Grant's house. He was like the only person I knew that had a a, a, a console, like a like a cartridge taking video game console. Take it, uh, take it. I loved going to his. Well, I mean, he was he, you know we were we were buds, and it was fun to go to his place anyway. But but I always wanted to go to his place over any other friend's place because he had the Atari twenty six hundred, <laughs> and that's all I wanted to do. Uh, but right around the same time, my dad picked up the old Sears console thing for pong that that's all it, did. it didn't take cartridges yeah all it did was play pong it was it, just it a wrong. you had to like you had to unscrew a couple screws on the back of your tv and plug these little like little like horseshoe clip things in there and then tighten the screws down around it and then make sure you're on channel three 
it, it, oh, and you also had to have this box. You had to switch the box between TV and computer. Yeah. In order to play it. So I don't remember which one came first, either the Pong thing or or going to Grant's house to play Atari. But uh, that's where it began with me. And then a couple years later, I was probably, mm, I don't know, eight or nine. I got for my birthday the Atari 7800. Mm. And that's I became a video game junkie. I <laughs> like that's what I did was play video games. Uh, so fast forward a few years, NES came out. Uh, it was probably it had probably been out for close to a year, and I saved up my money and bought myself a a Nintendo uh, NES original NES. Played the hell out of that, um, and then it's just pretty much every console from there on out. If it came out from Nintendo, I bought it. Uh, you know, to include Game Boy and like everything else. Mm, yeah, I still do have a uh, an original Game Boy with Tetris, and it still works. Yeah, I don't know what happened to my Game Boy. I think somebody borrowed it, like in Okinawa. I think somebody borrowed my Game Boy, and then I just <laughs> never got it back. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then, after, so after that, like I, I was pretty much a, a Nintendo exclusive guy. Like I, I didn't like Sega. I didn't like, you know, anything else that was out. And then uh, somebody, also in Okinawa, somebody was PCSing, which means uh, you know moving to a different duty location uh, for you non-military types out there. This dude was PCSing and he was trying to get rid of his stuff, which happens a lot. Like mm-hmm. you can get deals from PCS sales and whatnot. Uh, this guy sold me his PlayStation and all of his games for like a hundred bucks, I think, and he yeah. had like I don't know twelve or fifteen games. So like, yeah, dude, I'll help you out. <laughs> I'll give you a hundred bucks. <laughs> and so I ended up with a, with a stack of games. And then that, then I, I jumped on the Sony bandwagon from there. Like I was a, I've owned every version of PlayStation that's come out. Yeah. Um, except for the, the, what is it? The, the PS4, whatever super deluxe edition, like whatever that thing is called. I, I don't have that, but I've had the, the PlayStation, the PS2, the PS3, the PS4. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's pretty much where I'm at. Oh, you mentioned arcade. Yeah. I, I was an arcade junkie as well. If there was an arcade anywhere near me, I was probably in that bitch playing (laughs) something. (laughs) Yeah. But you, you grew up in the middle of BFE, Indiana. So yeah. Yeah. So like if we went to the mall, I, you know, begged to go to the arcade and I had to be dragged out of the place. Right. Whether or Uh, not you had any money. (laughs) Yeah, 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 exactly. Like arcades were just like super fun as a as a little kid just to watch people or just walk through the place and look at all the flashing lights and 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 all of that. And in fact, you might not even know this, Amos. The first arcade machines that I've ever played were in the IGA in Oxford. Really? Yeah, so the that place was hip at one time? I mean, a little bit. So <laughs> So they had a, a a single arcade machine that sat like by the um, like think where the frozen food section was, mm-hmm. and then you know if you followed that hallway or that aisle all the way down, it would go into the like the swinging doors that went into the back room, mm-hmm. right there next to those swinging doors between the the doors and the closest freezer w- was an arcade machine. Wow, and they would change it out every once in a while. I don't, I mean, time is dis distorted when you're a small child so it might have been once a month or it might have been like you know twice in the history of ever <laughs> i don't know uh but the game that i remember the most was moon patrol uh and yep i threw away a lot of my mom's quarters <laughs> into that thing <laughs> so yeah i was curious though amos speaking of like early games what was the first video game that you just fell in love with the the first game that you're like oh my god this is my favorite game air combat where you were like on the 2600 you were basically just a plane that could go back and forth and you had to fly over like a canal or whatever and you're shooting ships and my dog's trying to get up in my shit okay the air combat so that's a lot like the game that I was going to say for myself, and that would be River Raid. Hmm. And that's the same idea. You're, you're an airplane, and you 
you're you're shooting at things and i yeah i actually so for the twitch viewers or or youtube uh viewers oh no no that. this is this is it yeah this is it is it okay so we we had the same yeah uh favorite game so amos is about to bring up on the screen for the video um or or not depending on how <laughs> there we go oh, there, <laughs> there we go um yeah, so this is a this is a, a really cool website actually. Retro Games mm-hmm. uh, CZ um, pretty much has all of the information that you could ever want on classic video games. And uh, yeah, River Raid. It was just there. I don't know what it was about it, man, but it was just the funnest thing ever. And it was my first favorite video game. Is this is this playable? Um, it. On this, I don't know about that. Probably not. I mean, you can try it. Mm. I think they might have. I think it might be a link to uh, to a ROM or something. Um, it's, uh, re- remember when games had to be usable in black and white? Oh, that's right. Yeah the the original Atari twenty six hundred console actually had a switch. Yeah, black and white or color switch. Yeah, so adjust the channels. Yep, amazing. Um, so wow. yeah, that was that was a. An Atari 2600 game, and that was my my first favorite game. My favorite NES game changed often. Uh, <laughs> so my first game, of course, was was Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, uh, because that was the cartridge that came with the system. Um, and I played the hell out of that. And then, of course, Legend of Zelda, and you know, so many other games. But the first game on NES that just hooked me, that I was like, this is the greatest game was River City Ransom. Did you ever play that? Um, I'm about to find out when it shows up on the screen. <laughs> so this was... So think Double Dragon. Oh, yes. It's Double Dragon. Uh, but this was a much deeper story, a much more immersive experience, because you, you didn't just fight people. I mean, yes, you fought people. You fought the hell out of people. Yeah. But you also had to do other things. Uh, so think like an almost an early version of of like Grand Theft Auto. Uh, but don't think of the original Grand Theft Auto because that's not at all what it was. But what Grand Theft Auto <laughs> became, this is almost a precursor of what that was. The only difference being that you weren't the bad guy. You weren't a criminal in this game. You were actually, you know, the, the righteous do uh trying to uh, you know f- fight for justice and save your, sure. your girlfriend or whatever sure yeah i mean and that's something i used to do with games too i would invent my own stories in my head of what the action was portraying <laughs> <laughs> oh um i would say uh so river raid and then instead of river city ransom my favorite uh, nintendo game would have been zelda like the original uh legend of zelda I, right. As many times as I try to play other games, I always went back to Zelda. I just thought Zelda was just the bee's knees, man. Oh, dude. Yeah. yeah. And then you go one generation higher than that, and I think we both had the same favorite game again. <sighs> dude, so it all started with... <laughs> you remember back when, when we used to buy magazines, like actual like you know paper that was stapled together and it would have articles and pictures? Right. Or, and or, or, or glued together. Uh, yeah, with, with yeah, the, or like that. with the binding on the side, and like like you know, you could actually see what magazine it was from the side. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, Nintendo Power comes to mind. That was oh. definitely a glued binding. Oh, Nintendo Power. But there were other magazines that were a little more, uh, you know, less exclusive, um, but also more uh, expensive <laughs> because you know you you could get a Nintendo Power twelve month subscription for like nine bucks or something like that. Right. Uh, but these. Well, it like started out. It started out at fifteen. Remember that the original original price for one one year of Nintendo Power was fifteen dollars. Yeah, because it yeah, came to dollar twenty five an episode. Or an yeah, issue. and that's before they were doing like the you know once a quarter you got like a an extra like a bonus like uh, walkthrough guide or or something like that. Um, but well, anyway, so what I was getting at, there were in. Uh, like on newsstands, you could buy these magazines that, that covered not just Nintendo, but also Sega and PlayStation mm-hmm. and um, all of that sort of stuff. Well, the, they started offering um, game discs, like play, playable demo discs. Yep. And I would, you know, I'd pick those up and I'd, you know, play a game once or twice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Toss it to the side and I'd never see it again. 
Well, that all changed when uh, there was a, a demo disc for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. I'd never even heard of the first game, but here was this demo for a, a skateboarding video game. That's super weird. Yeah. I don't know. I'll go ahead and play it. Uh, fell in love instantly. You and I, I don't even know how many hours we logged of playing this stupid fucking I, demo I, disc. I bought a PS1 just to play this demo disc. <laughs> I went and got the place after hanging out at your house one night, drinking a few beers, had yep. gone to the BX the next day, bought the magazine. It was like EG Gamer or PlayStation Magazine or something like that. Yeah. And bought a PS1 that day just to play this demo. That's, yeah, that's how was, crazy in love with this game I was. It was incredible. And then of course, you know, eventually I bought the actual game, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Right, 2. but that didn't come out for like months later. We'd already mastered the, the demo. Oh, dude, yeah. We, so, we we went from racking up like fifteen hundred dollar or fifteen hundred point combos to like one point two million point combos <laughs> on this demo insane. level, and then the demo level was actually in the original game. <sighs> yeah, it was nuts. It got hard, and there was and there, were, there was even more content in that level in the full version, and mm-hmm. it was like, oh my god, mind blow. <laughs> oh, and there's a whole other game around this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we, One of my we, we used to create uh, create uh, custom parks for each other, and yep. then we'd have to be like, "All right, dude, you got to come over on Friday. I got like three parks for you." <laughs> yes. And we would put so many obstacles and gaps and shit like that. We'd run out of memory on the level. We'd max it out, and he'd be like, "Can't do that." Yep. Yeah. But I, but I That's got exactly like, what it sounded like too. You <laughs> get the little like your block would be like this <laughs> translucent red. Yep. So you you knew you couldn't place it anywhere. Yeah. Now we, we're we're getting a little a little far in the woods here because we haven't discussed one of my favorite things ever. What is your most disappointing game? Oh man, most disappointing game mm-hmm. is probably probably something to do with Star Wars. There's been a lot of shitty shitty Star Wars. Yeah, games. yeah. Mine not so much. My most disappointing game was Rygar. Oh, okay. I kind of sort of remember that game. Right. I logged hundreds of hours into that game and never got anywhere. The instruction manual is no help. The game itself didn't have a map. Sometimes you'd loop or into the same area going a different route. The game itself was broken and nobody, nobody knew until years later. That game, I tried everything to get that game to work. This sounds like my experience with E.T., the extraterrestrial on Atari 2600. <laughs> Except that game wasn't broken. It was just so extremely precise and, and ridiculous and aimless. Uh, yeah, yeah, according to the according to the creator of that game, it wasn't broken. Yeah, everyone else <laughs> broke as fuck. Totally broken. <laughs> By all the concepts of, of gameplay that we understand now, it was broken. Um, yeah. Others might call it just trash. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> um, all right. And uh, what, what was the game you were looking forward to most? So this would have to presume that you had heard about it ahead of time. I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be another Star Wars movie. <sighs> the game that I was anticipating the most may... Ha- oh my gosh, this is hard. It was either... Super Mario World. Ooh, okay. Or SNES. Because I, oh my God, Mario, Super Mario Brothers 3 was just so good in such an improvement over the previous games. Yep. And they took it like 10 steps further with Super Mario World. And Nintendo hyped the hell out of that game uh, well in advance of its release. And I, I was so hyped for that, and it did not disappoint. They had uh, maps of the levels in Nintendo Power Magazine before the game yep. was even released. Yep, yep. It wasn't even released in Japan. They were releasing fucking... Anyway, yeah. Yeah, it, either that or or a legend... or the, the Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Hmm. But I was super hyped for that as well. I, uh, I think... I don't think I was excited about A Link to the Past until I played it, and then I couldn't stop playing it. Yeah, which is interesting because Legend of Zelda was one of your favorite games. Yeah. 
I, and I, this was this was the going back to the same style of gameplay because the Legend of Zelda Two was junk. Uh, Link's yeah, Link's uh, what fuck? What was it called? Link's Adventure or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Straight trash. Like that. That game is garbage. <laughs> Although, if you watch the speed play of it, it's pretty entertaining because they've figured out exactly how to manipulate the RNG for all the 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 random encounters and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's it's far more interesting when you see people that have played it for twenty years and figured out how to how to ink every possible second out of that game. Uh, <laughs> I still, I don't, I don't know, man. But a link to the past went back to the original format and just like blew it out of the water the hell out of it yeah it's so good so so good yep that was um if i were to rank my favorite game of all time it would be the legend of zelda a link to the past Mm. yeah i mm, that's a tough one man i I might have to stick with with uh super mario world um it's just such a playable game i still i've got i don't know if if uh video watchers can see but on this shelf back here, underneath this shelf is an SNES with Super Mario World cartridge in it right now. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I still go back to it every now and then. It's just that replayable. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I, I, I like playing it with my six-year-old. Yeah. It's a lot of fun playing with her. Totally fun. Dude, have you played any of the newer Mario Brothers games like, I, I think it's called like New Super Mario or something like that. I've seen them played. We well, we have a Wii, so whatever the most recent one is that came out on Wii. Yeah, um, we've I've seen that played. I haven't actually played it myself, but I can't like playing the Wii just pisses me off in every aspect. I haven't even played the Zelda on the Wii because the the system itself just irritates the piss out of me because I'm old. Yeah, I, apparently. Uh, <laughs> so you probably haven't played the Switch either. And I haven't even seen a Switch in like real life, like seen it other other than yeah. somebody holding it. I've never played one at all. So I I hadn't seen one in real life until uh, Isaac got one uh, for his birthday this year. <laughs> <laughs> See a trend. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or was it or was it for Christmas? It was either Christmas or his birthday. I don't know. His his birthday's in January, so it's hard to yeah. hard to remember which one was which. Uh, but yeah, that that is a that is a brilliant piece of engineering. But see, I would just get that for the new Zelda game. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see haven't played the new Zelda game yet. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so the the Mario games are the new Mario games are super fun to play if you play them one player. Mm. If you play two player, it's simultaneous, mm-hmm. and you can fuck the other player up. Right, like it's one of those games where like you get too far ahead, the other person the, is a- the other person like falls off the screen. Yep one of those and you it, your characters can interact like you can jump on each other and trap right it's the worst like that's, you want to talk about somebody about to throw a controller through a fucking wall <laughs> that's what i am playing that game with my kids well, especially th- isaac because he's a little fucker <laughs> <laughs> my my thing is uh i watched that's what i've watched them play here and Autumn will be playing, and she's always the last one behind. David is always the first one trying to get somewhere. So it's it's always the twins yelling at David to wait for Autumn and to yelling at Autumn to hurry up and catch up. And all four of them are playing at the same time. And I I can't even, like, there's too much going on on the screen for me to pay attention to any single one of them. Um, Like, it's, it's like visual diarrhea. Super Smash Brothers. That's how I feel about Super Smash Brothers. Uh, yeah. It's fucking unbridled chaos and like seizure inducing. I don't get seizures. <laughs> I'm not epileptic. But that fucking game will conjure seizures. I was going to say, I'm not epileptic, but somehow my head still smashes against the wall 43 <laughs> times. <laughs> start foaming at the mouth. Yeah. And, like, I, bite my, I bite my tongue. Clothes fall off. I don't even know what's going on anymore. I just... Yeah. And so... Isaac has convinced me to play this game occasionally with him with like all of the extra craziness crap turned off. Like he unchecks all the boxes or whatever. Yeah. So it's just like a dude fighting a dude. It's st- like, it's worthless, dude. I love fighting games. Mm. Give me Street Fighter. Give me Mortal Kombat. Give me Killer Instinct. Any of that stuff. This game is, I, I just, I don't understand. I do <laughs> not get the popularity of it. It is trash. It's complete ass for for gameplay it's visual diarrhea like you described earlier it is just junk 
mm-hmm. at at me. RM underscore Del Nacho. <laughs> at me. <laughs> Smash Brothers is trash. Um, yeah, I, uh, I agree completely. Um, okay, so let's go <laughs> on to what what is the most recent game you've been addicted to? Oh, do do mobile games count? <laughs> Uh, yes. So if we're talking mobile games, it's uh, it's either Pokemon Go or Hill Climber Two. Or, well, okay, Hill Climb Two <laughs> is one of them as well. But I also I play a tower defense game. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Called uh, Castle Creeps or something like that. I just know what the icon looks like. I don't. I don't yeah. ever read what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Castle Creeps. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't know if it's on Android, but it's a, it's an iOS mobile game. And if you like tower defense, this is like the best tower defense game ever. Uh, Squid says balloons. Uh, yeah, I've heard lots of lots of really good things about that. I I played it once for like a minute and a half, and I think I just didn't play it enough to get into it. I don't know. Hmm. Um, but yeah. Okay, so non mobile. What's your favorite? Uh, what's your most recent uh, addiction? Most recent addiction. See, that's hmm. that's really hard to say because I almost never sit down at a console and play unless I'm playing with someone. Hmm. Man, this is gonna really age me for for console addiction. Uh, but probably the original Red Dead Redemption. Oh wow! Like when it first came out. Yeah, I played the hell out of that. That's probably the most recent one, unless you count me. Like picking up the my my uh, Atari seventy eight hundred sticks over here and and playing <laughs> like um, oh gosh I mean I don't I don't know Dig Dug I think that was the most recent one I was hooked on Ugh. like a month or two ago I was like I would sit down for like two hours and play Dig Dug and then be mad at myself because my hands were cramped and and basically bloody from <laughs> from grabbing that controller. <laughs> um. I, so mobile wise, I have like a slew of like 15 different games that I play until an advertisement comes up. Then I skip on to the next one. Right. They're, they're all just time killers. Um, I'm currently in a fight with my sister-in-law. She started playing Merge Dragons and just to prove her, prove to her that I could play it just as well as she could without spending money. I'm playing that as well. And yes, I am winning and no, I haven't spent a cent on it. Um, oh. and then, um, Console wise, it would have to be uh, the division, which I know the 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 sequel is coming out here in about a month or so. Uh, mm-hmm. I think March fifteenth. Um, but I, I I enjoyed that one so much, I bought it twice because I got it. I I got two discs, so me and the kids could play at the same time on the two playstations, and then I ended up getting uh, getting it gifted to me on the on Steam, so I started playing it there. Mm. that game as far as first person shooter games i think that game is like the ultimate fun game it's endlessly repeatable uh it's multiplayer online so you you can constantly have a different group of idiots that you're trying to kill stuff with um yeah i i thoroughly enjoy it i wish i was i had time to play the second one but i'll be on my internship then and i'm, I'm not guessing i have a lot of time to start off with yeah yeah cool uh tell me about the uh tell me about metroid okay so to round this all this whole thing up, I have recently been watching a series of videos called Metroid Critiques. Um, it is it is by a dude, and I'm going to try to. I can't search what something is about, but I can search by title, actors or directors, and categories like horror or action. Shut uh, up, Siri. Siri, <laughs> like, come on, <laughs> stop it. Um, the geek critique, and I'll have a link to this, this channel and, or the, the, this playlist in the show notes, the geek critique goes through and he plays these games from way back when and does a series of games he has or hasn't played and kind of breaks it down into, uh, the atmosphere, the music, the graphics quality, the gameplay, all that kind of stuff. And, and he does it in a way that's not boring. It's not a a video game review style. It's actual, like, let's critique the storyline here. I find it super interesting. I didn't know as much as I know now about Metroid, and man, that's a game that will always sit really high on my list of favorite games. Um, I really, I, I, I enjoy when people take things that are way old and I barely remember and kind of bring it to new light and shed new light on it, and that's what this does. Metroid critiques uh, the playlist. It's 
by the Geek Critique on YouTube, and it's just stupid good. I recommend if you if you're a fan of Metroid, go and check this out and li- and just uh, just give an objective listen. It's it's pretty good. I remember. So I enjoyed the first Metroid game. Mm-hmm. I remember when Super Metroid is that what it's called for SNES? Yep. When that game came out, you and Patrick lost your shit over this game. And to me, I was like, eh, I think it's, it's fine. But that's like all you guys would talk about for like a month straight. Yeah. Which is a long time back then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like three years. <laughs> like, God, I was wanting to talk about Dragonlance or something, but these two knuckleheads are over here. It's like, yo, yo, Samus, this and that. Well, because we, like, we were constantly trying to find the new areas that, that we weren't <laughs> in the original Metroid and, and compare and... Uh, you know, you can combine beams. What? You can go, oh my God, now you can get a freeze wave ray and shit. And it's like, ah. Yep. Yeah. That was my life for. <laughs> look, for- look we, we can't just sit here and fight over Zelda the entire time. We got to have other things to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. That, that's something we didn't mention during this episode. We'll, we'll probably save the full story for another time. But mm. uh, yeah, uh, a legend or Legend of Zelda a Link to the Past is the, I think, one and only time. That we actually went to Fisticus. Yes. Yeah, yep. we came close many other times. <laughs> but <laughs> Link to the past was the catalyst for our one and only fist fight. Yeah. Uh, next time on the <laughs> <Richard's Week. laughs> and, and the, the thing that gets me is we were both right. It was just a matter of how right we were. <laughs> we were we we had we'd split hairs down so far that like my way would would have saved three frames over your way or some shit like that. Like, no, dude, use the hammer. No, I'm going to use the whistle. Like, we were both, it, both fucking ways worked, but <laughs> but we were so caught up in it that, yeah, it, 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 that, that was ridiculous. Ah, uh, the dark world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. Where uh, where can people at you on the internet? Uh, yeah, yeah, Twitter, at Ethan Kane, E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. How about you? Yeah, Del Noche, uh, pretty much everywhere. On Twitter, though, it's RM underscore Del Noche uh, because, you know, I was late to that game. Um, what about the show? At Ritual Misery, R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-R-Y, as we were going to hear Flavor Toothpaste illustrate earlier or later, uh, uh, sometime. <laughs> <laughs> we heard it a few minutes from now, and we're going to hear it earlier. <laughs> yeah, you don't know, that 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 jives. That goes right. Um, uh, that was... <laughs> Was that Portal that did that? No, that's not Portal. Um, I think it's the timey wimey Doctor Who sort of thing. Oh uh, yeah, well, I mean, that could be. That could be. Uh, you can find all of those and uh, more links and everything else to our uh, to our show and all the things that we're doing at richmisery dot com. And I would like to remind you that we are in fact live every Thursday ish, except next week um, at six p.m. P- uh, Alaskan, seven p.m. Pacific, and I don't know. Does that make like ten p.m. Eastern? except for this week, um, on twitch.tv and diamondclub.tv, except for ever. And we, um, we, yeah, yeah, yeah things. We, <laughs> we, we have a live chat room. It's fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. We put we stuff also in there. Music from Kevin McLeod that we, we, I think Amos is going to add in post. <laughs> I can play it. I can play it now if I unmute it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> You're way early, dude. Uh, for Kent, for you, and for me, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. <laughs>